Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is February 19. Today, we're going to be looking at the book of Colossians. We'll be studying Colossians chapter 1. I want you to grasp the enormity of the situation, the enormity of what Jesus has done for you and for I and for all that believe. And to do this, the Apostle Paul is using very explicit language that cannot be misunderstood by any Jewish person, by any Pharisee, or by any Gentile. He groups them all together in Christ Jesus. When I was reading this scripture, my heart just wanted to praise God, but what the situation was that Jesus came into in this earth and all that the Father had planned that through him we would be saved and what Jesus had to accomplish, what Jesus had done before he came to earth in a bodily form, what Jesus did while he was here, what Jesus accomplished while he was on the cross, what Jesus expects us to do, once we understand all of the things I just talked about. And it's laid out very clearly in the book of Colossians, especially chapter 1. And that's where we're going to begin. Uh, I know this is not a preaching session, so because I could. I could go oh, two, three hours on this subject. Uh, and if I was breaking it up into sermons, it would be like a month's worth of sermons. But we're just going to go snippet by snippet, and we're going to start in Colossians verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father. Okay, that's number one. When you give thanks, yeah, it's okay to say thank you, Jesus, for your blessing and all that. But we need to give thanks and praise to our Heavenly Father through Christ Jesus. Amen? That's where it starts. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us, now, who is he talking about? You and me, right? Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet or worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints that are in glory, those that have already made it to heaven. Amen. Your uh, ancestors that are waiting in heaven for the conclusion of <laughs> <laughs> the conclusion of all of this turmoil that we're going through will come to an end. We can see the writing on the wall. You know, if you watch just the evening news, you can see these things. You know, Israel, a little state about the size of New Jersey, surrounded on all sides by enemies that hate them and want to annihilate them and to destroy them and to push them into the sea. And not just surrounded all sides by, you know, equal states of equal powers. No, it would be, let's take New Jersey and put it into the middle of South America. It'd just be a little dot on the map. And we'll make all of South America, you know, serious armies surrounding it at all times. I mean, in the natural, Israel doesn't stand a chance but they have withstood attack after attack after attack since their formation in 1948. They have triumphed over all of their enemies because God is on their side. Now, the United States of America has participated in the blessings that, my, that God the Father has bestowed upon us bringing us to greatness, bringing us to the wealth of the nation, using our currency as the, the trading factor in all of the earth. Uh, English is the second spoken language or, you know, that's being taught in all the schools. Almost every nation is teaching some English to their children while they're in school. God has done this because the United States has always been a friend of Israel and defended Israel. And Israel is blessed of God. Back to the Abrahamic uh, blessing that God gave him, he said, whoever blesses you and your descendants, I will bless also. 
That has been proven out here in the United States of America. We came close a few times of saying we don't want nothing to do with Israel under past presidential administrations. Past presidential administrations have tried to secure peace, quote unquote, by uh, convincing Israel to trade land for peace. And God said, I don't like that. And tragedies and calamities have resulted because of that as warning signs. But here we see all praise must be given to our Heavenly Father, who has made us, you and me, worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in glory. Praise the Lord. I think we'll stop right there for today. How about that? We made it through one verse. We only have verses 12 through uh, 29 to go. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, the, every day we will not just be covering one verse. Uh, that's where we're at today, though. It's just on one verse. Hallelujah. Uh, Till tomorrow, this Pastor Bob reminding you that when you understand what the book of Colossians here in chapter 1 is saying, ah, oh, Lord, folks, we're going to make sure that you're blessed in all that you do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah.